how do you choose a pair of sunglasses and what do you need to know about sunglasses the problem with this talk is going to be that I will not tell you what brand of sunglass to buy but I can help you think about sunglasses and become a more savvy sunglass shopper the question is should you buy cheap sunglasses at your local variety store or pharmacy on the rack for nine dollars or should you buy a pair of two hundred and twenty dollar Revos and uh, I'll try to answer that question although there's no easy answer so the first question is materials so the cheap sunglasses oftentimes not always are made out of acrylic acrylic is a really cheap plastic the problem with acrylic is that first of all it distorts it has a lot of what's called spherical aberration so when you look at your world if you have a cheap acrylic sunglass it will feel icky icky is the medical term and for some people that are acute seers they don't like that feeling it makes them sort of feel awful when they're looking through a poor quality sunglass some people don't care tends to be worse if you put these in hot places they're thermoplastic so they can start to distort and uh, they simply have a lot of spherical aberration so the optical clarity is not good the other thing is they shatter into shards and I think a lot of athletes think oh it's plastic that's good glass may be dangerous because it shatters but plastic that's probably good but cheap plastics acrylic are not good for sports because they can shatter into shards and really create havoc if you end up for me skiing is a contact sport so if you end up falling hard going into a tree whatever it is bam and you've got plastic shards in your eyes so generally avoid acrylic additionally acrylic like all plastics scratches easily so it's another thing you have to worry about with any plastic lens including better plastics and we'll talk about those in a minute. The next plastic is called CR39. CR39. And that's the good plastic. It's better than acrylic. It's stronger. It's more impact resistant than glass and more impact resistant than acrylic. Um, has really good optical clarity, i.e., very little spherical aberration. The only problem with CR39 is that it still can shatter and it's not as shatterproof as the quintessential sports sunglass which is made out of polycarbonate we'll talk about polycarbonate in a minute the nice thing about plastic is it weighs half as much as glass so glass lenses tend to be heavy CR39 tends to be lighter but like all plastics it scratches really easily so it generally needs a hardness coating on it to prevent scratching now what about glass People always ask me when I speak at meetings about sunglasses, people always say, so what do you use? And, you know, whatever I use might not be what you want to use, but I like glass sunglasses. A lot of people hate them. For one, they're really heavy. For two, they often condense. So if you go from a really cold environment into a warm room or vice versa, they can suddenly condense and they're all foggy. Another thing that happens with them is if you get in a car wreck, or if you're into sports, they can shatter into shards. And if you have friends that are ophthalmologists, ask them if they're trauma surgeons. They'll give you horror stories about people wearing glass sunglasses. They're in a car wreck, and suddenly they've got shards. So why would I buy glass sunglasses? Because I'm a cheapskate. And whenever I get plastic sunglasses, I scratch them. And glass is really scratch resistant. Also, glass has really good optical clarity, very low spherical aberration, really good clarity. They tend not to scratch. They last forever, so I like them. But they're really heavy, and they're probably dangerous for contact sports. The last material I want to talk about is polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is the strongest of the sunglass materials. There are now a host of really modern materials that are polycarbonate-like like plutonite and others, but basically they're based on Lexan or plexiglass or polycarbonate. For contact sports, clearly the safest. They're used for safety goggles. Back in the olden days, polycarbonate lenses had very poor optical quality because they tend to be higher index. We won't talk about that now, but the higher index the lens is, the more spherical aberration it introduces. So older generation polycarbonates and cheap polycarbonates tend to not be as optically clear as some of the better manufacturers. But the good manufacturers like Bole and Smith and on and on and on, um, Oakley, 
they tend to have very high quality polycarbonates which for practical purposes have the same optical quality as a good plastic uh, CR39 or a glass lens. The problem with polycarbonate, like with all plastics, but especially polycarbonate, is that they're very soft and so they scratch easily. So if you go to your favorite store, you know, whatever that is, Kmart or Walmart or whatever, and you see a rack of cheap sunglasses and you go, ah, there's a nine dollar pair of sunglasses. I'd love to buy those because they look pretty cool, but they're probably acrylic. And you pick them up and they say, huh, they're made out of polycarbonate. Well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. But they probably don't have enough UV protection. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But you look at it and they say, oh yeah, 100% UV. And so you think, wow, I just saved $200. So did you save $200? Well, I'm not saying that buying a pair of Oakleys is worth an extra $200, but what you're getting in a better sunglass is you're getting less spherical aberration, better optical quality, but you're also getting a really good anti-reflective and anti and a hardness coating, which is an anti-scratch coating, which will help preserve the life of your sunglass. With a cheap polycarbonate lens, if you just put it in your pocket, it will end up with all sorts of little scratches on it over time. And sometimes I've even had cheap sunglasses where part of the hardness coating, the anti-reflective coating, literally just flicked off when the sunglass flexed. There is something that you should never do in a sunglass store, but it's what sunglass testers do, and it's called the Scotch Tape Adherence Test. And it's done with real Scotch tape, not that wussy magic tape stuff, but old-fashioned Scotch tape. And they put it on the lens, if it has an anti-reflective coating on it, and then they pull it off. And if the anti-reflective coating is on the Scotch tape, it's not a very good anti-reflective coating. Another thing you can do with cheap sunglasses when you're buying them in terms of material, if you're on a trip and you lose your sunglasses and you end up having to buy a pair of cheap sunglasses and they're acrylic, if you're in a store that has fluorescent lights overhead, you can sort of move the sunglass back and forth and look at the way the fluorescent light tubes are reflected off the lens. And typically the more wavering you see suggests the more distortion there's going to be in the lens. So try to find a lens that has less wavering reflection of the fluorescent lights above you. So people often ask about glacier glasses. You know, what do you need when you're in snow? And why is that important? It's important because snow reflects more than 90% of the ultraviolet, as opposed to grass and dirt and bushes like this, just reflect 5%, 10%, 90%. So you can imagine in the summer, bright sunlight, especially when you're climbing or skiing or hiking in the snow around noon near the equator, high altitude, you've got big problems with ultraviolet. So you really need to reduce both the amount of ultraviolet transmission as well as the amount of visible light transmission. So they make glacier glasses and the main difference between a glacier glass and a regular sunglass is that glacier glasses tend to have very low visible light transmittance, often as little as 5%. When I first got into climbing, there were no REIs nearby. So uh, I read in some kind of a newsletter that you could buy welding goggles, oxyacetylene welding goggles. So I bought these welding goggles that I used to climb with up on Mount Shasta. And uh, unless you're using them on the equator at noon during July at uh, 20,000 feet, I couldn't see anything. It was like being blind. But uh, modern glacier glasses are built with very low light transmittance, but still adequate visible light transmittance so that you can see. The other thing is most of them have integral side shields to reduce the amount of ultraviolet light coming in the side of the sunglass. And uh, of course you can improvise this, and we'll talk about improvisation in another module. One year, I was a doctor for the Americans on Kanchenjunga, which is the third highest mountain in the world. And I remember on that trip, we had Carrera sunglasses that we got from Carrera, and they're great sunglasses. But the problem was they simply did not uh, absorb enough visible light. So when we got high on the snow with those goggles, I mean, with those glasses, we literally had to wear our ski goggles over them because we were squinting underneath them. So visible light transmittance is a variable for driving 
you often need to have quite a bit of visible light transmittance so you can see pedestrians and you can see your speedometer and yet for glacial climbing especially in the summer on snow you uh, you need to have very little light transmittance so there's a variable so just be sure you buy an appropriate sunglass for its intended use in terms of visible light.